This is Saul the Cobra Montana. He comes in here. This guy's better than a journeyman fighter. He is. The issue with Saul Montana is he's been a decent heavyweight, but he's had trouble with the bigger, better heavyweights. Had Jimmy Montoya, very well known and respected boxing figure, who's his trainer and manager. The question for Saul Montana, and it's a question when smaller heavyweights face David Tua, can they deal with his power, Joe? That's right. And, uh, you know, Montana, as much as durable as he is, the reputation that he has, I mean, in my opinion, I don't think he will be able to hang with Tua's strength, his size. But uh, tonight is the night of the survivors. Gomez, Reed, Montana. These guys are really guys that are giving their opponents a true test because they're guys that know how to survive. They are durable. They have good reputations in the ring for lasting the distance or eight or nine, ten rounds. And this will be a good test for David Tua in his comeback. And a telling point is that the man you're looking at actually started his career as a super middleweight at 168 pounds. So it's an indication of how far up he has come. Uh, you know, in talking to uh, Jimmy Montoya and Ruben Chavez, who uh, handle this guy, they know they've got a crafty fighter on their hands. They also know they almost have to go for a knockout. That's a tall order because David Tua doesn't get knocked out. No, but here's the other thing, though. David Tua and you, you and I have both seen it. And Bob, you've certainly done a lot of his fights. He will have moments where he can zone out in the fight and be very lethargic in a fight. If a fighter like Montana can create a very slow pace, you can lull David Tua into a fight where you kind of outpoint him. So that, I think, is a lot of what Montana wants to do. Yeah, and Montana could bang a little bit. His last fight uh, was a first-round knockout over Mario McGill down in Mexico. And in July, he won a 12 hard rounds with a pretty good puncher in San Antonio Sam in Germany and lost a very close decision in that one. Here comes David Tua, the Tua man, handled now by Cedric Kushner, promoted by Cedric. David's a wonderful kid. His mom and dad are watching in New Zealand. Tui Bali and, of course, his mother, Noella. As you take a look at his five uh, last performances, all victorious. His last loss, you got to go back to Chris Bird. And he was at the same weight that he is at 237 and a half. And that's exactly six years ago to the day today. Since then, management problems. He's over that. He's past that. Got married to Robina, bringing up the kids. He's happy. And Joe, how much is being happy and have the business end out of it? How much does that get to do with your performance in the ring? Oh, it's got a ton to deal with it. I've had to overcome setbacks, injuries, and a lot of times inside the ring, I feel distracted and not happy. But I think for this first time that David Tua does seem really genuinely happy and focused. And everybody wants to fight him. The guys from Super Fighter want him in that. And Dean Lonergan, the promoter in New Zealand, wants him to fight uh, Shane Cameron, offered him a quarter of a million dollars to come back to New Zealand. And I know Shane and Dean and all those people are watching tonight. So let's see. Let's get it underway. I'm excited to know you folks are uh, David Tua and Saul Montana. Here's our ring announcer, Joe Martinez. Joe. Live from the Southtown Exhibition Center in Sandy, Utah. It is time for the main event of the evening. Ten rounds scheduled in the heavyweight division. Brought to you by Sports and Entertainment Media in association with Cam Boxing and Cedric Kushner's Gotham Boxing. And before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take a moment to recognize West Jordan, Utah's own former middleweight champion of the world at ringside, Gene Fulmer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world and in North America on Integrated Sports Pay-Per-View, we start with our introductions for this main event 10-round heavyweight bow. Your three judges scoring at ringside are Lynn Moore, Chet Fulmer, and John Tuero. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of all the action, the man in the middle, Larry Fulmer. This bout is sanctioned by, thank you. This bout is sanctioned by the Pete Suazo, Utah Athletic Commission, Secretary Bill Colbert, Commissioner Richard Montañez. Physicians at ringside are Dr. Blake Welling and Dr. Nadine Bakazi with your timekeeper in charge of the bell and counting for knockdowns, Amy Stedman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Sandy, Utah, make some noise, are you?
Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing blue trunks, trimmed in silver, he weighed in officially 242 pounds even. Presentando primero en la esquina azul con los calzoncillos azul con plata y un peso de 242 libras. As a professional, this veteran brings an outstanding record into the ring. 48 victories, including 42 wins by way of knockout and 14 defeats. Su record profesional, 48 victorias con 42 por knockout y 14 derrotas. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the Mexican heavyweight champion, presentando el campeón mexicano en el peso completo de los Cabos Mexico. Presentando Saúl La Cobra Montana. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He wears the black trunks, trimmed in white, and weighed in officially 237 and one half pound. Y su oponente en la esquina roja con los calzoncillos negro con blanco y un peso de 237 libras y medias. He too brings an outstanding professional record into the ring. 47 victories, including 40 big wins by way of knockout and only three defeats in his professional career with one bout even. He is the number 13 rated contender in the WBC from South Auckland, New Zealand. Here is David Tuomo. Larry Fulmer brings him in. The dressing rooms and explain the rules. Do you have any questions? I expect a good, clean fight. Go to your corners and come out boxing. Touch gloves. Again, this fight is sanctioned by the Sweet Swa uh, Pete Suazo uh, Utah Athletic Commission. We'll take a look at the tail of the tape, and it's going to show us a few things. The David Tour is an inch shorter. He's five and a half pounds lighter. He's three years younger than is uh, Sal Montana, and he has a one inch shorter reach than uh, does uh, Montana. So everything but age in favor of Montana. But that's the way it is with David most of the time when he fights. Let's see if he establishes a jab, or do we see the left hook immediately? Or do we see the right hand? Montana will have to be cautious early with this guy. Or will he attack? And he does attack. David catching punches, and he does a good job of that. He has pretty good head movement. At least he trains for that. Ducks underneath the shots of uh, Montana in the early going here. David hasn't let fly with a left hook or the right hand yet. When he opens up, he'll do it sumo cum laude. In other words, with a big, big splash. And sometime he waits. There's that jab. Guy we saw fighting earlier who sparred with him a lot, uh, Gary Gomez, says he thinks that David's showing more quickness than... You know, what he saw him in the early part of his training, he's been up here for four weeks training here. It was the first right hand downstairs, and so far, Montana just stopped boxing, David, in the early going. Well, it's interesting. So, Montana fighting a very aggressive fight right in front of David Tua. Now switching to lefty, a very intriguing ploy, and we remember how Chris Bird so easily handled Tua. Maybe this lefty stance is uh, an interesting ploy for Montana. But you got to think, there could be no better preparation than sparring Gary Gomez in, to get ready for Sal Montana. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good sparring. Yeah, you get two prototype fighters, but there's an awful lot of experience in the favor of Montana. He's back fighting as a right-handed fighter. He's doing the scoring. There's the left hook. It finally finds a hole. Trade another left hook. You can't trade left hooks with Tua. I don't care how many Montana lands. Trading hooks with David Tua is a big mistake. But again, don't forget, Jimmy Montoya handles Montana, and he knows the best shot is to try to pressure him early and see what happens. You can't lay back and let him just unleash those uh, left hooks. Uh, no, but you don't want to stand in front no, of trade left absolutely hooks. That's not. a mistake. Nobody wants to trade left hooks with David Tua. And, and Montana's winning this round, make no mistake about it, but you don't square yourself up and crank left hooks against Tua. You'll get whacked. As Tua with the right hand downstairs, but not thrown viciously. You see David huffing and puffing again. There's altitude yeah. here, but he's been here a long time. But that's the way David has always fought throughout his career. You know what I like about Montana? The first left hook he tried to try to try to try to try and he made it right there. And David like a bully on the floor. It's up to seven. the box 
Boxing World and Boxing Magazine in Australia, who's also vice president of the IBF, said, I want to rank this guy in the top ten. That's where he belongs. Ray Whitney might have his uh, his work done easily well, for tonight. I repeat, you can't stand and trade left hooks with You said it, Al, and as soon as he did it, it happened. And, and with all due respect to David, that was a great win. This is a, a cruiserweight fighter standing in front of him. Now, that's what he's supposed to do, and it was very compelling and very exciting. And he cranked up that hook, and it is true. Even heavyweights, when they get hit with the two of left hook, they're going to go down. It is very true. You kind of wonder why Sal Montana did stand and be so be so stationary in front of David Tua. You yeah, wonder what it does prove. But uh, again, it was a very, very powerful, dangerous left hook that now, you know David Tua had. It was fun here when Montana was trading hooks and landing shots with him. But here, right in front of him, gets whacked with two big two, left yeah. hooks by David Tua. And that when Tua can get that punch in against anybody, I don't care who they are, he will hurt them. His problem is sometimes, and we just saw him go 10 rounds with Robert Hawkins and not do it, sometimes he doesn't get the punch in, he doesn't land the knockout. But this time he The did. way Sal Montana came out boxing, it seemed as if that style was tailor-made for yep. David Tua. Absolutely. You know? Well, it's what David had to do uh, because Montana could have made this very competitive. But, Al, as you pointed out when I was talking about the left hook, you know, you can't trade left hooks, and that was no. the key difference. He made the mistake. He got in too tight, and he got nailed. Well, the danger is... David Tua, an exalted moment for him. The danger is when you're in against a fighter like David Tua, you can hit him with a left, left touch. And so when you can, you say, I better keep doing this. It's a bad mistake. You just need to be a little bit more finesseful exactly. with him. You can't be stationary. Quick feet, fast hands, not stationary, a lot of movement. Saw Montana didn't show it. Well, David Tua gave the old uh, KO in the Maori language. The Maori TV had to love it. Let's make it official with our ring announcer, Joe Martinez. Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. Two minutes, 15 seconds of round number one. Referee Larry Fulmer reaches the count of 10 for your winner by knockout victory from South Auckland, New Zealand. David Tua. So from Auckland to Christchurch, Jordy Cal with the boys watching in the bar down there. Milson Tevin and the guys enjoying everything. David Tua has done what the New Zealanders love. And we've got highlights of this and Few though they may be, it's great for David Tua. Well, you know, early on in this fight, look at there were that was fun. Saul Montana was making this a very interesting first round. He was landing lots of punches against David Tua. And so for us as fans, it made it interesting, but it put him in the position where Making that happened. it interesting, but when you're fighting David Tua, you do not want to make it interesting. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> the whole point is to not make it interesting. The whole yeah. point is to use every inch of that ring with yeah. your feet, with your speed, show him angles, make him hunt for you. And Sal Montana didn't do that, and David Tua landed the best left hook I've seen in a while. All right, Benny is standing by with uh, David Tua, so Benny, take it. 41st knockout of your career, and it happened to be a left hook again. I just want to say it's, uh, it's an honor to fight here in uh, Utah. I never thought I'd find myself fighting here, but I appreciate everybody for coming out. And, uh, you know, I was never, I was never gone. You know, this is not a comeback fight. You know, it's a continuation of my tour of duty. And hopefully uh, I get another opportunity uh, of fighting for the title and hopefully winning it. So um, I'm happy. Now, your, your sparring partner, Gary Gomez, mentioned the fact that he thought you were quicker than you ever have been before. Also, you also talked about it's a different training now for a David Tua. It's a David Tua that's not training to lose weight. It's a David Tua that's training for a fight. You couldn't have said it any better. I mean, uh, it only took 34 years, but better late than never. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now we got his promoter, Cedric Kushner, here. Cedric, what's in the plans now for David Tua? He's coming off a 10-round decision win, and now this big knockout win. Well, I think, the, I think the important thing is the continuation of activity. And uh, in light of that fact, uh, everything is now finalized for a fight September 7th at, uh, the, uh, at, the Soaring Eagle. at the Soaring Eagle Casino in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And then we'll continue from there. David will fight for the world championship in the next six months. Well, you heard it right there. So, David, you can tell Utah loves you, the world loves you. A great performance. Congratulations on a great, great performance. Thank you very much for your support. And God bless.